Today I'm going to show you one of my favorite new microphone purchases and how it emulates dozens of other high quality classic studio legendary microphones right inside the box. So the mic that I just purchased for our new studio is the Slate VM1. It's a large diaphragm condenser microphone. It's the one that I have set up right over there. And um, it comes with, if you get the, the full package, this Slate Digital preamp, which is super, super clean. Um, basically, the goal that they wanted to do with this microphone was to, to have the flattest, most non-hyped, just... Uh, yeah, flat frequency response possible. Uh, and this preamp doesn't add like really any sonic coloration. It's very, very, um, it's an ultra linear microphone preamp that's an, also got an active direct box too, so you can put a guitar bass into it as well too. But um, I use this every day on vocals, and I've had artists coming in here lately who have just been blown away with how good their mix sounds in their headphones and how fun this mic is to sing into. So I want to show you a little bit of how I use it every day and I'm going to show you some of the different models that come right in the plug-in. So this is the Slate VM1 and um, I'll just sing sing something in it. This is by no means going to be a, a hit song. We'll pretend, pretend I'm recording a dog food commercial. <clears throat> I love dog food. It sure tastes good. But the best kind of dog food. What rhymes with good that's a dog food brand? I need to write something really quick. What's a Take two. I love dog food. It's good for me. And the very best kind of dog food is pedigree. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to pull up for that beautiful masterpiece of, <laughs> of work um, just these different models. So basically the plug-in goes right on the microphone and then you can cycle through all these different mics. Um, right now I've got it on what is their model of a U, uh, U47, it's a classic Neumann mic. You can crank the intensity from 0 to 150. They've got a Sony C800 which sounds really, really great. They've got a, uh, a 251, which sounds great, a 67, and a C12, an M7. They also sell um, extra ones. I think these are in the Blackbird Studio pack. I haven't purchased these. Um, but these are all really great models. My favorite model so far has been, I think on most singers, either the, the C800 model or the 251 model. Um, if I was doing like a more darker, warmer sounding song, I might use the 47. Uh, as far as intensity, I, I usually leave it kind of right in the middle. Like any, that just has, sounds most natural to me. Like, and these, we're not talking about like major, major, major noticeable effect differences. Like we're talking, these are, these are very subtle changes. And um, so cranking up the intensity will just uh, help to, um, make that effect more pronounced, I guess you would say. And then what I love about it is I can then load on a preamp model. This is kind of like a Neve preamp. It gives you a little bit of virtual drive. I kind of use it about set right there. Um, and then I typically like to put some compression after it. Um, I, I like it to be kind of a slower attack, quicker release, to where my needle's pinning right about um, between the one and the three. And then I'll typically put some some EQ on it. I like their their Neve EQ is pretty solid. Um, a lot of people question: Do you put the EQ before the compressor? To my ears, at least in this setup, it sounds the best after it. I, I, I I'm not sure why. Typically, I'll just kind of brighten it up a little bit. I might might carve off some low end under 80 hertz. Um, so to just be adding some adding some super top end brightness, some high mid brightness, and then I might actually kind of dig out some of the, depending on the singer, around like 400 hertz, and then I might thicken it up around 100. So that, that's kind of a, a typical 
um, what the vocal chain would look like. So I'll show you really quick just what it sounds like flipping through some of the microphones. All right, so this is the actual window. I'm just going to play it for you without any processing on it. This is what it sounds like. I love dog food. It's good for me. And the very best kind of dog food is pedigree. So pretty clean signal. Um, if we put the virtual mix rack on, which is what contains the modeling and all of those other things I showed you. This is where you can actually choose which mic you use. So let's just cycle through some of these and hear what they sound like. And again, remember the difference is kind of subtle. So I love dog food. Can't it's good up, for so really me. Hear. And the very best kind of dog food is pet. Let's check the 800. I love dog food. It's good for me. 51. And the very best kind of dog food 67. is pedigree. I love dog food. So it's good mids. for me. C12. And the very best kind of dog food M7. is pedigree. I love dog food. It's good for me. Yeah, and the very best kind of dog food is pedigree. So you can kind of hear the, 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 they're, they're all subtle mods and I don't even use them on full 100%, uh, but that, that's kind of the goal of these. And so you can hear like the 800 is obviously really bright. I love dog food. It's 47 is darker. I love dog food. A little thicker. 251's bright, but with still with a, a decent uh, mid response. I love dog food. 67 is a lot of that high mid. I love dog food. It's good for me. So you can kind of use these all, you know, to your taste. But I, I love how these things just give you kind of infinite options. And you can obviously go back and reconfigure these, you know, even at a mix level. So... Um, that is the Slate, uh, let's see, I believe it's called the VMS. It's the Virtual Microphone System. If you just search their large diaphragm condenser, we can put a link in the description to what that is. But that's how it works with the actual mic models. So that's the Slate VM1. I love that mic, highly recommend it. It's like $700, I think, with the preamp, it's 1000 best purchase you will make. I know there's other modeling companies out there like the Townsend and the Antelope one. I personally don't feel like you got to spend the money to get the result that you need that those companies charge. I think Slate does a great job of um, capturing these mics. And yeah, there's going to be a lot of people arguing out there. It doesn't sound exactly like the real thing. Well, my argument to that is no two ones of those real things sound the same either. It's like you could take a U47 um, same year, same model, put it next to another one, same year, same model from 1960s or whatever, it's not going to sound anything alike. So it's not really comparing apples to apples. All I can say is they sound really good. Even the flat sound of the mic is totally usable, and I've actually done that. Um, but I love the flexibility. Like You can monitor through it with zero latency, so you can kind of audition different mics. You can like If you get to mix stage and decide you don't even like what the model that you used was, you can even change it then, which is really, really nice. Or let's say that you get to send your, your vocalist or your artist a mix, and they're like, man, the vocal feels too bright. Maybe you don't want to EQ it. Maybe you just want to try switching the mic model to something that's less bright or less crispy or sibilant. Um, so for the money, hands down, as far as mic modeling goes, the Slate VM1, in my opinion, is the, the best buy for your money. Hey, what's up? Hope you loved the video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our page for more awesome music industry content. If you are interested in getting a publishing deal, a record deal, or having a career in the music business, I've got a free video class for you right here. Click that link down there to get access to it. And if you want to check out another one of my vlogs, click up here.